are gathering with us for worship this morning from wherever you are as we gather together as the people of King Spring United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Warren. I'm here this morning with Pastor Joanna, uh, with Mark Miller, our music director, with Star Song, our music associate and organist, and with Tim Kraft, who is running tech for us. And we are glad to be able to be with you this morning, even if we can't be in the same room. We know that some of our younger members of our community may not be able to sit through and focus for a long worship service, even a briefer worship service than normal. And so we want to let you know that we will be offering a special children's moment at about 10 o'clock after this on our Facebook Live with Pastor Tim. So we will have a special time of worship for our young folks as well. You'll notice that Pastor Lauren and I are intentionally standing, maybe awkwardly distant from each other, but appropriately distant from each other. We hope that you are practicing forms of social distancing and finding that even in um, added space for distance, we're finding nearness to each other. We're hoping that you are at home, that today is a form of Sabbath for you, of being home, of finding rest and renewal. We want to encourage you to continue to be safe to continue to take care of yourself, to wash your hands, to not touch your face, um, but also to encourage you to think about um, as our building is closed in these next two weeks, um, to find times to find rest and renewal, but also some distance. I know that this is hard. I know that we, um, this is encouraged from leadership at all kinds of different levels, that that distance can feel hard or heavy. If you um, have anxiety or health concerns or just need somebody to talk to, we are a friend call away. But we want to encourage you and the um, face the future together as we walk in fear and not faith. Um, that we all need to take a step. We see it as a way. It's weird to be in the sanctuary without you. Um, we wish you were here with us, but we also know that this is a way that we can care um, and love our other. We want to invite you to take on that task as well in your daily living. Um, and if you need help with anything, if you need someone to run to the grocery store for you, or if you, if you have anxiety or you need somebody to talk to, or if you, if you feel sick um, and you need somebody to talk to, we're going to call it. In these unusual times, we are also finding new ways to engage and to grow spiritually together as a church. We want to let you know that while small groups are postponed for the time being, we are working on offering digital options to replace those small group gatherings. Pastor Joanne and Bible study won't be meeting here on Wednesday morning, uh, but she will be offering that Bible study on Facebook Live at 10.30 this Wednesday morning. If you want to join with us, you can find that here on our Facebook page. Pastor Tim is making resources available through our Cave Kids group. So if you need resources for your child at home to grow spiritually, or to distract your child at home when it is a little chaotic to have a small person home for two straight weeks, we invite you to check out the back room uh, and we join and get those resources. But most importantly, we are continuing to offer care to our most vulnerable neighbors. We are continuing to minister through our backpack program, through our benevolence ministry, and through our uh, blood drive coming up this Wednesday. We'll have a few more details about that a little later in the service. But for now, as we gather together to worship with us, Center our spirits, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, in these times of anxiety, fill us with the peace of your presence. When we are feeling trapped and consumed, lift us up. Fill us with your spirit, renew us with your words of life. Help our worship this morning to draw us close to one another and to draw us close to you. That though we are in separate places, we know that we are one or two or many gathered in your name and you are among us wherever we are. Lord, guide our spirits, guide our hearts, help us to draw close to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Our first scripture this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 17. Hear now these words. 
From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people there thirsted for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They were almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take your staff in your hand with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Nasa and Merah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Our gospel lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 5 through 13. We'll be continuing in our Lord's Prayer series this morning. And I invite you to hear these words anew. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine will arrive and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though you will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? This is the word of God for the whole world. Thank you. Amen. 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 Will you pray with me? God alive and Present right where we are. Having encountered your holy word, make our hearts on fire for you. May we hear to say your voice above the rest and draw near to your will, to your joy, to your peace. Speak to God for we are listening. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation then of all our hearts. Be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was a little girl, I can distinctly remember it was a special, special, special trip that we would make. We would go in town, and when you walked in, the smell would you. And when I was a little kid, they had all on the wall they can with different shapes and characters. Um, they lined the wall. When I was little, and you said our daily bread. Remember the last word that meant my main point of reference was the bakery on Main Street. It's still there. It's where my wedding cake came from. Our daily bread is full of decadent and delightful treats, incredible bread. It's not much I drive by it every time I come to church. There's not one in my But what is it that we think of when we think of daily bread? It feels a little different now when we think about it in the context of this moment. 
I mean, is it is it the piece of toast you might have had this morning? Is it manna from heaven? Is it the meal before you? Is it the emotional energy you need for the day? Or wisdom for the decisions you face? Or is it the soup kitchen line? Is it a good croissant or multi-grain? Does it have to have whole wheat to be a daily bread? Or is it gluten-free? I want to argue in some ways it's all of that. But it's also more than an actual thing or tangible one point or a place that you can go and get it. It's more of a world. We're meant to see the world through the lens of daily bread. Given to us freely as we are invited by Jesus to pray this important prayer. When we pray like our Lord and Savior has taught us, when we say the Lord's Prayer, we're asking to be deeply in the collective enough. For we believe that in the end these uncertain, wild, crazy times, but indeed somehow in God's kingdom, there is enough for each and every one to be sustained. That's hard to back up, I think. It's a radical word, word that we've all wondered about toilet paper and all that. But y'all, there is this grace filled, wild, and beautiful mindset that frees us to say, there is enough. That somehow what we have has been given to us by God will be enough. We won't have storehouses promised to us, let's be clear. But we also don't have to live in a scarcity mindset when we trust the body of Christ. A scarcity mindset is one that we must scramble and scramble and protect me and mine. It's not the kingdom of God or promise to us in the scripture. It doesn't bless the name of God. We don't do that and continually say, How be thy name? Let me take care of mine. Our daily bread mindset says we're praying that in this abundance God is giving us, there's enough to share. And I believe that even now, today, even here or wherever you are, even in this. I remember this with us. And when I was in college, I went on a spring break trip. We spent the, the week in an orphanage in Peru. And the house was we kind of delicious food. Special for us as visitors. They would, they would make nice food. They had guests in the house. And they would place a place for us to share around for famous I, I remember this one night at work that day. I was hungry. I was, and we sat with the, the boys in the boys' home. And they sat with this boy and this little boy. I looked at the plate. And the little boy was like, he makes that first. He, he, he sort of looks at me. And, and our, the truth is, this boy would have been put out on the street most likely because his parents didn't think they could take care of him. He looks up at me with his silver dollar eyes and he hands me the liquor and gestures for me to serve the next up. This boy, more than I may have ever known, lived deep in his faith that there was any bread. He trusted that there would be enough to go around that we could share. You know, I think we sometimes think, especially us who live with so much, we think that people who would not have much would not believe in this kingdom principle of sharing God's gift. They find the opposite to be true. They're closer to this faith filled living. For them, our prayers say that what we believe in God it is true. Our prayers say what we believe about God. Right? They know that God is not Santa. That God is some magical blessing vending machine that we press the right letter and number and we get what we want. Rather, our prayers confess that we trust that God hears us and that God knows, that God loves and God cares. That God is still a God of manna in the desert, of water on the rocks, the bread that they would need only for that day, for water for people who were complaining and grumbling. And God is still a God who loves and provides. The scripture we read today in the Gospel of Luke comes as Jesus is teaching them to pray. The verses at the beginning of chapter 11 are the Lord's Prayer. And then Jesus goes on to say that these stories, and y'all, these stories are wild, especially when we understand them in context. 
right? This, this story of a man, Jesus tells the story of a friend who shows up at midnight. Remember, this isn't some late night Walmart run when this unexpected person shows up, right? This is when someone goes to knock on a house door. There's someone who's in need of a place to stay, but it's safe, right? There's no holiday in either, right? So, so someone's arrived and they need a place to stay that's safe. And you're unprepared, so you walk out in the pitch dark, there's no street lamps, right? You go get help from a neighbor. The neighbor's like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm celebrating the night, the door's locked, everybody's in the asleep. And, and he says, even if you won't get up for you even if this is your friend, don't you think you're persistent? And if you as a human will respond to asking for what we need, don't we believe so will God? But we have to be persistent and ask and seek with faith that there is enough. We have to keep looking for it. And if we humans who are broken and busted and problem-filled, give to our children what we ask for, won't God somehow love us still? The truth when I think about God giving us the Lord's Prayer, I don't think God was giving us this thing that had to be the equation for all our prayers. Right? It's not this litmus test that all your prayers have to include this. God was giving us a way that we could always come back to knowing who God is. That we could in our prayers say what we really believe. That our theology and our practice can line up. And that's what these parables that we read today remind us. This is how God is and how God works in the world. And as Matt Skinner, a New Testament scholar, says, God hears, God provides, God forgives, God protects. God expects us to be generous to one another. So when we're here to pray, give us this day our daily bread, we're trusting in a God that is giving. And we're willing to live in God's kingdom of enough, enough love, enough grace, and enough provision. For this day, for this season, for right now. I think we can use that in this world. That even in this time where we're socially distant, that God for this day, God, you are enough. I am enough. There is enough. Trevor Hudson and Paulus Berlin, a devotional I add in these days, leading up to Easter, wrote about daily bread this week, and it struck me as I read it. It's a hard what we believe. When we pray, give us. Trevor Hudson writes, In the prayer Jesus teaches his disciples, he invites them to ask for daily bread. This request points us for our utter dependence on God for sustaining our lives. This phrase emphasizes God's provision. God offers us what we really need on a daily basis. What specific thing we honestly need right now? To ask for what we need is to do what beloved children do naturally when they turn to one, one they call Father. Of course, when we pray like this, we also must look beyond ourselves and our own needs. It is impossible to pray for our daily bread without the painful awareness of those who don't have any bread at all. That is praying for our daily bread encourages us to acknowledge our hunger. I also remind you that when we pray, when we pray, give us this day our daily bread. We don't exclude this promise of daily bread from anyone. We don't even say, well, that the people we don't like skip them in their provision. The sustenance and nourishment they need in body, soul, and spirit. We pray and pass that on to them. You know, we trust that God shows up for all of our creation. And so we pray on behalf of people who are struggling to know that they have enough. We pray on behalf of people who are hungry daily for bread. We pray even on behalf of those who have too much. For them to realize they have more than enough for this day and thus to share. We pray for all of them and for ourselves too. Give us today what we need to live, to know, to dwell in peace with God. I like to remember that when we pray daily bread, we often think of a logo or something practical. But we also know that Jesus is the bread of God. So we're also praying for us to have the sustenance to carry what we need and to handle our lives. This day, how desperately do you need the bread of God? For those who are breathing, you're going to have to walk through this day, or feel on strength for those who are ill, or for our anxieties and, and overwhelms. 
Give us this day our daily bread. What a powerful prayer, more powerful than I think we often realize. Not just because of the words we pray, but because of the God who does it. And by the way, it changes us as we pray. This week, I'm going to invite you to keep praying the Lord's Prayer with intention. Maybe to pray it while you wash your hands. But I also really want you to think about becoming more aware of the daily bread that is in your life. To look for it, to name it. We're in a season where I would invite you that maybe taking it day by day is a beautiful thing. But each day, could you name the bread that you have? Even in this season, in mercy, there's plenty of stress around. Plenty. But what if we gather around our tables, around your home, a little bit more, and said, right before? This doesn't have to be something that we actually only do on one Thursday in November. Come be with us, O oh God. Find us with your love across time and place. This morning especially, we are thankful that you are a God who is worthy of all the glory and honor and praise. For it is you we come to worship. We pray notably for those who work in the medical care field, for doctors and nurses and staff in hospitals, and care facilities all around the world, for those who work in research and development. We pray for hourly workers and local workers and local businesses and all those affected in the economic impact of this time, that you will sustain them and be with them each and every moment. We pray for leaders, our leaders here in our community and our leaders nationally, that you will guide them and fill them with wisdom and help them to seek after their common good and your will above all else. We pray for school teachers and administrators and the bus drivers who will be doing holy ministry work. We pray for our, our school kids as they continue to learn and grow at home, for our, for our families. We pray for those who 
in nursing homes and care facilities. In the distance, they may be feeling that they might know how deeply they are loved. We pray for each of us that you will guide us, that you will still us in, in your spirit, that you will bring to us a comforting word, that you will remind us that nothing ever separates us from your love. Holy God, in this time, we bring to you our hearts. We lay them at your feet. We trust in your prayer that binds us together. We pray that you will comfort those who are sick, be with those who are grieving, give courage to those on the road to recovery, and help each of us to live boldly as your disciples. And so, here in this place and wherever we're gathered, we pray as your disciples, as you taught us our Lord and Savior, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Even in this uncharted time, our church is committed to caring for the vulnerable people, caring for those God calls us to. I mean, I want to talk about a couple of ways that we're doing that. First, I want to let you know that our backpack ministry continues to respond with agility and care and concern. We'll be packing bags this weekend and getting them to schools Monday. Bus drivers, we believe, will deliver them to the children that are in need. So we are grateful for our school partners and our partners through that work that will help make that possible. We believe that we'll be able to get uh, our weekend bags this week to each student. Our benevolent team continues to do ministry as part of, uh, you heard about this through our Lenten offering in the season, but as we always do, we provide for our community members um, in moments of crisis or concern or need. We need help to stand in the gap. We continue to do that. We've already reached out to some of our community partners. If you uh, are in need or need some help, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. Our benevolent team would understand that in the, the reality of the coronavirus, there may be an economic need. And also, if you have um, resources to share or a way to bless others, we encourage you to do that. And um, last but not least, we are aware that you have to be people who make wise and deliberate decisions. And so we have made a deliberate decision to still hold our blood dry. There are a couple pieces of logistics I'm going to share about that with you. There will only be one door open to our church Wednesday afternoon from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Uh, everyone who comes in will have their temperature taken as a precautionary measure. Extra safety concerns and hand care will be provided. We are grateful for some of our younger um, church members who will help provide, who are at lower risk, who will help provide volunteer support for this. And we are also encouraging you, if you are a lower risk person and are able to donate blood, um, to contact the Red Cross and let them know. We want to encourage you to make a wise decision for you. Although we're still having the blood drive, if you fall into a higher risk category and you still donate blood, we want you to make a prayerful and wise decision about that. If, if you need to stay home, we're, we're opening this up, um, but we understand that some of you may not be able to come out. And we, and we encourage good, safe decisions for everyone. But I am grateful to be part of a church, honored to be a pastor of a church that is still doing church, still doing ministry, even in this distant and disturbing time that somehow grace is still at work. It's the most powerful force at work in the world. And, and we embody that in the body of Christ. If you have questions about any of that or, or want to know more, you can be in touch with me, send me an email, call me, and I'd, I'd love to talk with you more about it. We're grateful to do this work together and, and are grateful for the ways you support and are attached to your church.
As Pastor Joanna mentioned, we are continuing to be in ministry in this season. And if you are able to give, we would appreciate giving. Uh, you can use Zanko on our website. You can mail in a check. Uh, please don't come to the building to drop it off. We are keeping some different office hours, but we appreciate and hope for your generosity. As we offer ourselves, our time, our talents, our gifts to God, let us pray together. Almighty God, you give to us water from rocks, bread from the sky, new life each day, and breath in our lives. And we give you thanks for your generosity, for the abundance that you provide. Lord, help us to respond to your generosity by giving it faithfully, trusting that you will give us this day our daily bread. Help us to give courageously and boldly to care for our neighbors in uncertain times. Lord, give us generous spirits as we offer ourselves to you this morning. Amen. Thank you. 